Moral Oral has one of the most memorable casts in the history of animated television. From alcoholic mayors to librarians obsessed with eggs and censorship, the residents of Moralton display a wide variety of characters with different levels of intelligence. That makes us ask the question, which of these puppets are the most intelligent and which ones should pray for a little more brains? I'm Keefe Nosi with Wicked Binge, and this is Moral Oral Characters. Dumb to brilliant. Let's start our list off at the bottom of the intellectual totem pole. These characters are the dumb. The gold medal of dumb is going to a double ranking of Shapey Puppington and Block Posebule. Shapey is Oral's eight-year-old little brother who acts much younger than he actually is. His vocabulary is very limited, usually only shouting out a few words such as cake, mine, or yummy. Blaberta definitely feeds into this behavior by treating him as such, even going as far as to breastfeed him. Later on in the series, Shapey is accidentally switched with the Posebule's son, Block, who more or less acts the same way as Shapey. Block and Shapey both clearly have developmental issues and possibly are mentally challenged given what we know about them. Near the end of the series, we do start to see them mature a little bit and become much more well adjusted, and Shapey even speaking in full sentences on occasion. Had the series continued, we might rank these two a bit higher, but since we didn't get a whole lot of scenes focusing on their developmental growth, we have to say Shapey and Block earned the gold medal in this category. The Silver Medal of Dumb is awarded to none other than Nursilla Bendy. Referred to as Nurse Blinkless initially, Bendy is a school nurse whose low intelligence is a source of comedy throughout the first two seasons on the show. As the series progresses, we find out Nurse Bendy is a highly disturbed person who has a very childlike mind stemming from trauma she's received. She constructs a fake family of teddy bears out of loneliness and her insecurities that everyone only cares about her for her looks. Nurse Bendy largely lives in denial of the world around her that causes her to misunderstand very obvious social cues and situations. She doesn't even initially put together that Joe is her kid, despite the fact that he came out of her 12 years ago. Nurse Bendy is another character who does reach some emotional maturity later on in the series, which is great, but it doesn't absolve her from still being kind of a more on. The Bronze Medal of Stupidity is being awarded to Principal Norm Fakey. Very few of the authority figures in Moralton are respectable, but Principal Fakey is by far one of the most deplorable. On top of punishing students like Tommy for being free thinkers, Principal Fakey is a sex addict who frequently cheats on his wife with Nurse Bendy. He does express guilt over his actions with Bendy, but he refuses to change his habits, leading him to use mental gymnastics to deny them. Once Principal Fakey gets an STD, he kicks his wife out, believing it came from her being unfaithful. Principal Fakey has a very childlike mind and, despite knowing his faults on some level, constantly lies to himself in order to believe he's a responsible adult. There are very few cases we could point to that show this character is smart on any level, personally, professionally, or emotionally. Shooting his way into the next spot is Officer Roger Papermouth. An immature and dim-witted man, Roger is an officer defined by his cowardly nature and bumbling antics. Comparable to Officer Barbrady from South Park, he often fires his gun on impulse whenever he feels threatened in any way, including zombies due to fearing their nudity. Roger is divorced by his wife Florence, who sees his less favorable characteristics, leading him to become both very resentful and jealous. He takes out said resentment by shooting his daughter's teddy bear, showing how emotionally insecure and ridiculous he can be. Officer Papermouth is one of the more well-intentioned adults in Moralton, as his shortcomings are less of a result of blatant hypocrisy or denial, and more stem from his genuine lack of awareness. Now we get to another double ranking, with Carl and Kimberly Latchkey. Carl and Kimberly have the relationship of a prototypical, shallow high school couple being totally obsessed with each other and neglectful toward everyone else. That's made worse by the fact that Carl and Kimberly graduated from high school years ago and simply haven't matured one bit since then. There is a very clear pattern among the characters in the dumb category having stunted mental growth and Carl and Kimberly are no exception. Carl even accuses his own son, Doey, of trying to move in on his action whenever Doey comes to them for affection. Kimberly also has trouble reading signs, such as when Stephanie is very clearly trying to express feelings for her. Carl and Kimberly have no awareness of anyone's emotions aside from their own, partially because they're extremely selfish and just don't care about anyone else, even their own kid. Up next we have the shady doctor known as Quentin Xavier Potter's Wheel. One of the most prominent side characters in the series, Dr. Potter's Wheel is Moralton's most respected doctor, despite being incredibly incompetent in his position. He almost kills Dr. Chosenberg due to the decision to not treat his wound, hoping it'll bring miracles due to being shaped like Jesus's face. On top of that, when Oral gets shot in the leg, Dr. Potter's Wheel informs him that he will be limping for the rest of his life, possibly due to shoddy medical treatment from Potter's Wheel. Dr. Potter's Wheel also seems to not care about his patient's well-being and manipulates Blaberta into hurting herself so he can get sexual gratification. Potter's Wheel certainly isn't going to win any awards for his intellect, nor his morals. Rounding out the dumb category, we have Kimberly and Carl's offspring, Doey Latchkey. Oral's accomplice on many misadventures, Doey's a very friendly kid who almost always does whatever he's told. He's shown to not be the brightest, which does lead to him getting manipulated by people around him, such as Clay or Miss Sculptum. Doey also doesn't seem to think certain 
certain situations through, such as when he tries to play with a sundial at nighttime. He does poorly in school and rarely is shown thinking for himself in any situation, though he obviously never had a proper adult figure to teach him self-awareness due to his extremely neglectful parents and manipulative authority figures. He's a good friend to Oral, but just not a very smart one. Now that we've tackled the dumb, let's take a step forward and talk about characters who are a little more intelligent, usually. This is the mixed bag category. We're starting out this category with Joe Second Opinionson. While many of the kids in Moralton listen to authority without question, Joe is much more outspoken and rebellious. Somewhat of a typical bully by nature, Joe thinks very little of everyone around him and usually threatens other kids with violence to get what he wants. While he generally uses his brawn more than his brains, Joe does have a tendency to be manipulative if given the opportunity. This includes when he steals money from the church and pins the blame on Marionetta. Joe's attitude largely stems from his insecurities regarding having no mother figure in his life for the longest time until he reconnects with her years later. While this does show some emotional development, we're going to bet that Joe doesn't get much smarter from this considering his mother is Nurse Bendy. Up next is the Marlton mayor himself, Clay Puppington. Clay's the head of both a corrupt town and a deeply unhappy family, proving that he is phenomenally bad at the two roles he takes in life. He teaches oral nonsensical lessons in his study which are hypocritical and ridiculous, and it's a good thing none of it ultimately sinks into Oral's brain for very long. Clay is emotionally distant from his family and deals with the vast majority of his problems by drinking alone in his study. He does have competence in many very basic areas, and much like many other characters, uses mental gymnastics to convince himself things aren't as bad as they clearly are. We can't exactly call Clay a total idiot because he does seem to have a lot of self-awareness buried deep down, but his constant repression of emotions leads him to saying and doing many stupid things. Right above Clay is his spouse, Blaberta Puppington. Much like her husband, Blaberta is a deeply unhappy person who maintains a positive exterior despite feeling dead on the inside. Coming from a family that often neglected her, Blaberta tends to seek validation out from others in a desperate attempt to connect with whomever she can. She'll even go as far as to mutilate herself to appease a doctor with a gore fetish. Despite her own past, Blaberta is very neglectful of her current family members and generally avoids interacting with them as much as possible. She spends most of her time cleaning everything she can to get her mind off of her unhappy life, showing she has many coping mechanisms much like Clay. Since neither of Oral's parents have very high emotional nor professional intelligence, we're ranking them closer to the dumb category even if they have a lot of self-awareness lurking inside them. Coming in next is Agnes Sculptum. Oral's teacher at Diorama Elementary, Miss Sculptum is generally an apathetic person who cares little about providing any useful knowledge to her students. She even seems to get annoyed whenever any of her students asks her a question after class, preferring to just simply go home. Miss Sculptum's lessons are ridiculous and highly inaccurate, although that might be more of the fault of Moralton's education system. There are times when Miss Sculptum can be quite devious, such as when she manipulates Doey to keep giving her presents under the false pretense that they can eventually date each other. Miss Sculptum's story does get darker as the series progresses, which eventually leads to her mind snapping and causing hallucinations. We wouldn't call Miss Sculptum entirely stupid, despite her moronic lessons, but her general disinterest and lack of mental stability led to very few situations where we could classify her actions as smart. Running in next is Coach Danielle Stopframe. From the very beginning of the series, Coach Stopframe has an unhealthy obsession with Clay, doing everything he can to get with him. This includes seducing Blaberta and conceiving Shapey years before Clay had ever even met him. He is a highly manipulative and calculating man, even if he does show signs of weakness and desperation. Stopframe is much less devoutly religious than other Moralton residents and will switch between worshipping God or Satan, depending on which one gives him results. While Coach Stopframe is generally portrayed as much smarter than whomever he's manipulating, we can't rank him higher because he does have moments of stupidity. In the final episode of the series, he loses respect for Clay due to seeing him kissing Miss Censor Doll. Did it really take him this long to figure out that Clay is a pathetic and bad person? I guess love, or prolonged infatuation, makes you stupidly blind to some things. Preaching in our next spot is Reverend Rod Putty. Despite being the spokesperson at the most important place in Moralton, that being the church, Reverend Putty is not highly revered amongst the residents of Moralton, aside from Oral and Florence, of course. His sermons are often long, drawn out, and full of rambling about his own personal problems rather than the actual lessons of the Bible. He's very sex-starved and driven by a need to lose his virginity. Despite this, though, Reverend Putty is phenomenally bad with females, leading him to becoming a very jaded person. With that said, Putty does improve himself throughout the series, especially when he reconnects with his non-Christian lesbian daughter, Stephanie. While we still wouldn't say that Reverend Putty is the smartest nor most moral servant of God, he sure has come a long way in improving himself and opening his own mind. Next, we finally get to the titular character himself, Oral Puppington. Oral is somewhat of a hard character to rank, since much of the show deals with him going from a dumb, naive kid to being much more mature and aware of the world around him. Throughout much of the earlier episodes, Oral continually misinterprets the life advice given to him by adults, which often leads to disastrous circumstances. You might say that makes him especially stupid, but given the insight that comes from Clay's lessons, we're not entirely
entirely sure the adults would have handled these situations much better. Oral does blindly accept whatever he's told, but as the series progresses, he starts to become increasingly confused by what his father is saying to him. This eventually culminates in Oral losing all respect for Clay and seeing him for the man he truly is. Oral may make a lot of mistakes, but at the end of the day, he is smart enough to become a well-adjusted man despite his crazy childhood, so we give him major props for that. Rounding out the mixed bag category is Sal Figuerelli. The owner of a corner store, Mr. Figuerelli is one of the friendlier residents of Moralton, usually maintaining a bright and cheerful attitude. He does have his faults, such as stealing and making Oral perform child labor, but as far as Moralton residents go, that's the tip of the iceberg. Unlike many adults in town, Mr. Figuerelli is actually quite good at his job, running a very successful business without many issues. He can be a little too easygoing, responding to everyone with his catchphrase, no prob, even if they segregate or physically assault him. If not for Mr. Figuerelli's occasional naivete, we'd actually put him at the bottom of the smart section. As it stands, he finishes off the mixed bag section. We've waded through the dumb and the arguably dumb, but what about the smarter members of Moral Oral's cast? This section is the smart and brilliant. We're starting the section off with Christina Posebule. In the episode The Lord's Prayer, a family called the Posebules moves in next door to the Puffingtons. Each member of this family is a mirror image of the other family, with Christina being essentially the female version of Oral. Christina shares Oral's kind and tolerant nature without stooping to the same levels of stupidity that Oral does, at least as far as we can see. Christina, much like Oral, was the only member of her family to notice Block and Shapey had been switched, even though her parents never listened to her. Hard to comment much on Christina's overall intellect given her limited appearances, but from what we can see, she is a very bright kid. Up next is Francis Clara Sensordal, one of the scariest and evilest residents of Moralton. Miss Sensordal is a highly manipulative woman who embarks on a scheme to rule over Moralton. She leads groups of picketers to protest anything pure in the city, which ranges from weddings, movies, to even food. Miss Sensordal is always scheming and thinking of her next move, showing she does have a huge level of competence. She seems to have developed a god complex over the years, seeing everyone else as pawns in her game. We have to admit, Miss Sensordal is quite smart in her own way, as her ability to manipulate others works very often. The only reason she narrowly misses out on the top three is that we don't get to see the depth of her schemes unfold by the time the series concludes. The Bronze Medal of Intellect is awarded to Tommy Littler. A close friend of Oral's, Tommy is a highly curious kid who likes to study science in his free time. Since Tommy's science books obviously go against Diorama Elementary's warped curriculum, this leads everyone to label Tommy as stupid. He gets put in special education class with other kids interested in science, causing everyone to patronize him. Tommy's obviously much smarter than his peers or even adults, even if no one realizes it. We're glad we can give Tommy the recognition he deserves by giving him the bronze medal on our countdown. Stephanie Putty is being awarded the silver medal of intelligence. The owner of Moralton's only sex and piercing shop known as Buried Pleasures, Stephanie is noteworthy for how much she sticks out from the average town resident. She's very friendly and usually relaxed, although she does have a habit of angrily giving herself a new piercing whenever she loses her cool. While very grounded and mature, Stephanie does occasionally misunderstand someone's intentions. This is best demonstrated with her relationship with Kimberly, which the latter merely takes as a joke. Stephanie is one of Oral's few positive role models and definitely one of the smartest, granting her a well-deserved silver medal. Finally, the gold medal of brilliance is given to Arthur Puppington. The grandfather of Oral and father to Clay, Arthur is a hard-working farmer who lives in Sinville. He has a broken relationship with Clay due to blaming him for the death of Angela, Arthur's wife, and Clay's mother. This causes Arthur to abuse and eventually abandon him altogether, which is a big reason why Clay becomes the miserable and abusive man he is. When Oral comes to live on Arthur's farm for eight months, Arthur realizes the error of his ways in the past. He owns up to the mistakes he made as Clay's father and realizes the ultimate truth very early on. Oral is far too pure to be corrupted. Arthur is certainly one of the most mature and sensible characters on the show, who is able to actually own up to his mistakes without living in a world of denial. All of this makes Arthur by far the smartest character in Moral Oral's history. 